Hey everyone, welcome to Fake Walker Justine. We're back on YouTube, so if this video reaches you, thank the algorithm bros. In this episode, I'll be focusing on the consequences of Kenya's infinity debt. We all know how this is going to go. You'll be angry, China will win, and you'll probably need to learn Mandarin to eventually access this episode in the future. Nihao, let's not get ahead of ourselves though, because this week's episode title is also not accurate, because no debt is infinite. However, the Kenyan government hasn't put a cap on it, so who am I to fight them on this? To be able to understand the consequences, we must start with how much debt we have. So I was going to do this part as like a presidential debate thing, but I don't have a podium. According to the budget policy statement of 2021, Kenya's public debt as of June 2020 was 7.06 trillion Kenyan shillings. That's a big number. I had to write it down just to wrap my non-mathematical brain around it. It took some time to figure out the number of zeros too, and I would like to apologize to my math teacher from primary school. Some of your work actually went to waste. However, that number was falsely reported because the Treasury stated in November 2020 in its post-COVID-19 economic strategy that the debt was 8.4 trillion Kenyan shillings. Being 8.4 trillion Kenyan shillings in debt means that the Treasury had no headroom to borrow an extra 1 trillion in its 2021-2022 financial year. There's a lot to unpack here. First, I'll give you a minute to figure out how many 2 billions a day that is. Secondly, Kenya is lying about how much debt it has so it can borrow more. We all know this government's steady polyamorous relationship with the Chinese government, the IMF, and the World Bank. Some of us even tried to break you guys up like some weird old people reverse parent trap and it didn't work. We have a lot of debt now and I'm using we very loosely here considering we all know who was clicking on that accept loan button. Do these international loan guys have an app? At least that's how I picture it and the guy in charge often clicks accept without reading the terms and conditions. I almost never read the terms and conditions. The font is so small. As a former Imshari and other fintech enthusiast, it's way too easy to be on loan rotation as a country and I would like us to log out now. To help you get an idea, here's a list of all the loans. I'm sorry, I can't do that to you. I don't want this channel to crash from the weight of how much we've been paid. However, here's a list of Kenya's highest interest external debt and where it comes from. Please, remember, this is just some of the external debt. We haven't even started looking internally. I cannot even fault this country because I don't think there's a single person in the world that loves introspection. I had to do some self-reflection today and that lasted a good 30 seconds. So how did we get here? When the current government took over in 2013, public debt stood at $16 billion. It's now $70 billion. That's more than four times as much. We, the Kenyan people, would like to take this government to borrow as anonymous. We got to the current debt level mostly because the current government had a super ambitious infrastructure plan. They pledged to build roads, a railway system, hospitals, and five stadiums. Do you guys remember that five stadiums played from that campaign video that felt like a geriatric TED talk? I was really looking forward to attending a concert in one of these stadiums, but this administration admitted in 2019 that they had overpromised and were only going to build one stadium before 2022. In math terms, that's just a fifth of the original promise. I hope my math teacher is proud that I was able to quantify that. FIFA even recently banned Kenya's top stadia from hosting any international competitions because they're substandard. Two bumbling men in matching red ties managed to fall on seven stadia. So, I never want to see people in matching outfits running for office ever again. In other failed promises, class 1 peoples were promised laptops as soon as this government took office. I'd like to inform everyone that the peoples are now small business owners trying to survive digital tax. Most of the borrowing that this government did was to launch game-changing infrastructure. However, the only game-changing these people have been able to do is find new ways of plunging Kenyans into deeper levels of poverty and economic strain. But those roads, though, bread is now officially 60 bob. How are you doing worse than 24? I have to admit that some of the infrastructure vision has come to fruition. They did it at inflated prices, so totally on brand. The SGR, which was built by exorbitant loans from China and moves at the same pace as a bus traveling the same distance, has allegedly been operating at great losses. I guess you can't make an omelet without breaking a few banks. So where is the money going? The Venn diagram for this is mostly a circle and it's just corruption except maybe for the Nairobi Expressway. I know, I spoke too soon. Who is that highway benefiting? 
with their toll fees and war against the environment, it's definitely not Kempinski because they are drowned out of the Westland skyline while their guests try to survive all that dark. Hey there, always wanted to take a safari? Why would you? That feels cliche. Why not enjoy the real Nairobi? Sidewalks? Who needs them? Skip over the open ditch and try not to be run over by the border guy. Go around the city. Enjoy crossing busy streets you might get run over by another matatu, but the music they'll be playing is fire though. Live. Almost die. Love. Visit Nairobi. This ad is purely a fake work with Justine Creation. Please walk responsibly and hold on to your phones in Nairobi. So are we paying it back? If so, how are we doing it? Your guess is just as good as mine. It's a big probably. Now onto the consequences. In a bid to continue servicing this growing external debt, Kenyan citizens and government officials are going to be on the receiving end of measures formulated by the piper to pay him. The World Bank has proposed charging more for water. Oh, come on, World Bank. We're not anti-shower like the Caucasian caucus. You can't do this to us. Public universities have raised their fees significantly, with the University of Nairobi recently proposing a 118% fee hike. 118%. We know the economy is bad, but that much for a certificate whose content is mostly available from an Indian dude on YouTube or a 30-second TikTok is too much. The IMF, which plays a key part in feeding this country's insatiable loan hunger, has proposed growing the tax base. All these different taxes the government has continued to introduce are directly tied to those loans they won't stop borrowing. From the digital service tax, to installment tax, to minimum tax, to why did you go to Vasha for the safari rally tax, which are probably just overlapping income taxes. The IMF also proposed a hiring freeze for civil servants. That's why the news cycle has been dominated by strange smear campaigns of civil servants. I'm not saying they're doing a good job, but it's a whole different ballgame when the government starts to eat its own. Items that weren't taxed before, like liquid petroleum gas, have seen a 16% VAT slapped on them. There's also increased taxes on airtime. I already stopped calling people a long time ago. Text me like an adult. If I have to call, I'll start having conversations like telegrams from the past. Need money? Hate you. Not to be confused with Telegram app of the present, which is probably a safe space for adult film enthusiasts. The consequences of overborrowing are likely to morph into more systemic failures of the future. This country will likely experience a decline in local entrepreneurship for small and microfinance enterprises and brain drain, where skilled people move to other countries because Kenya is inhabitable and doesn't offer great wages. This is already happening because Kenyan nurses are already failing English tests on their way to the UK. Can borrowing too much lead to economic collapse and sanctions from powerful nations? Probably. This whole episode felt like a page in our history book, and it's because it's happened before. 24 plunged this country into the depth of structural adjustment programs, and Offshore Red Eyes has successfully done a remix. I did not even try to find solutions for this episode, because you heard me tell you I'm mathematically challenged, right? I decided to talk to an economist to know just where we stand, what we can do, and possibly where we can meet the borrowers and throw hands. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for joining me on this edition. Stay tuned for more episodes and stay woke.